Welcome to Smacky's Garage. Today, we're gonna to be replacing the steering wheel on our 69 Mustang with the coolest wheel that they make, a rim blow steering wheel. What makes the steering wheel so cool here is not only the wood grain that you have on the outside, but it's a rim blow wheel. That means there's rubber on the inside. To beep the horn, all you have to do is squeeze, and when you squeeze it, the horn will sound. It's not like a typical wheel where you just push the center or you push the lever on the bottom like that's in the car now, but you just squeeze. So this is the wheel that I've been using. It's an old 60s Mustang wheel, or maybe an early 70s Mustang wheel that's been cracked and damaged. You can see the horn levers right here on it. To replace the wheel is really simple. So we're just gonna remove two screws from the back of this. I think they're right back here. They should be Phillips heads and it'll just come right out. Now removing these works work best if you have a small Phillips head and not really something long, but I don't know where my small one is right now. So with those two screws out, you should just be able to remove the pad. So to remove the wheel, I'm gonna get a nut and I'm gonna remove this here off the center and this entire wheel assembly should come out. All right, before we put the new wheel in the car, we wanna make sure that everything works the way it should. So what I like to do is I like to check these with a voltmeter, check for continuity. So we're gonna attach it to either side. So I'm gonna put one here, put the other here. And then the way that the rim blow works is I'm gonna end up squeezing on the inside and then I should Beep. So as you see, when you squeeze it, it should beep. So these are making contact with each other. So that's what it will look like when it works. So each one of these screws is grounded to another ring. So you can see, it's hard to see, but this screw here goes to the external ring, while this screw here goes to the internal ring. And by putting these here, it'll short them two together, make a connection so that it knows when to beep the horn. So we're gonna go ahead and screw these in place. Now it shouldn't matter which one you put on which side because it's just closing a circuit. So now that that's in place, here's the pad that we're gonna be using. I'm gonna end up replacing this on it here. Uh, if you can see, there's actually a penny glued in one of these and painted black. And I'm gonna find, need to find some way to pop out the center logo. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this apart. All right, so now with these screws out, this should just pop right out. So while not in the best condition, this logo here is actually original and I wanna use it in the car. From straight on, it looks good. Uh, as you start turning, you can start seeing some of the scratches and damage to it, but to replace it, it looks like, you know, the only thing holding it in is these. So for this, it's obviously been broken before. You can see damage up here. You know, for this, I'm going to apply some heat. It looks like there's some glue around it. I'm going to try to get it out without breaking it. So what I think is happening is it's actually getting caught up on the rubber on the outs, on the inside, so it's not pushing all the way through. All right, so we're in place. What I ended up having to do is use a small screwdriver and push around the top edge to push this material on the other side of it. But after that, it just dropped out. To hold it in place, I probably don't need to hold it in place because it's so tight in there with this new one, but I'm gonna put a little dab of RTV on each one of these. So RTV might not be the right thing to use for this, but it's what I'm gonna to use to hold it in place. So 
So we obviously can't install this without a new screw kit. So with this dried, we're gonna put the back on. Now with this in place, we will use these black screws and secure it. I think what I'm finding when I install these is, you know, you really have to bend this into place to get it to line up well. You can tell it's probably gonna to need to be bent to line up with the pad itself. All right, we're all tightened down. You can see there's still, tough me. You can see there's still some gap in there where there's probably some light passing through, but it's, it's not horrible. I mean, over time I'll just work it, I'll bend it by hand and just make it fit. All right, so now that we have that ready, we're gonna get the wheel in the car and then we're gonna get the rest of the hone in place. Now that we're installing the wheel in the car, we're gonna focus on these two pins here, which are gonna make contact with the back of the steering wheel. So when these two have a short across them, when the horn is pushed, that is when the horn will sound. So let's go ahead and get it on. One well, of the first things I'm going to do now that I have this in the car is I'm going to test the horn just by squeezing. And you can see it works. Okay, so now that that's in place, we're going to go ahead and tighten the nut in position. Now like we did with the other wheel, we're going to take it, there are three screws instead of two that go back onto the wheel that hold this front pad in place. So after that, you're tight and you're ready to go. The wheel's in. Very happy to finally have the right steering wheel in the car. Looking forward to driving it come springtime, not when there's a lot of snow outside. So thanks for tuning in to Smack His Garage today. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe for the upcoming videos that we have coming through.